Okay, my name is Jakub Perlak and please call me Kuba. It's, uh, it's a weird habit, but I start with that. And my talk will be about leadership. And I think it's like a nice uh, idea to talk about leadership because it's something what is very important. And I was actually more practitioner than a researcher. So I finally revealing my second part of myself, my second face. I'm trying to do some research on important stuff, I think, and some scientific stuff. So I'm trying to make a PhD about leadership and self-organizing teams, and I will try to combine those two faces. So in this talk will be more theoretical, but I will bring some practical advices because otherwise you'll get bored me and me must as well. So I will start from the buzzwords because it's usually nice to connect to the people. So the, the future of the work is it's kind of scary, right? It's like uh, we would like to talk about generative AI, chat GPT checked. Uh, this is all changing. Uh, the presence actually is now. And I like the saying from William Gibson, who's saying that future is now, but not evenly distributed. And I think this is like something really important right now that we are facing change in our cognitive ability because we can use the tools, change in our creativity, change in our behavior, change how we lead. And other buzzwords are on the slide like VUCA, Bunny, Cloud. Cloud is not more, no longer a buzzword, but we see that the work is changing. The question is, uh, is our organization or are our organization are changing? So that's the stage of that our life is a bit complicated from year to year. So the remedy is simple. We need more leadership, bro. And when I did a research for this talk, I made like a simple query on the uh, on Google, and I got over five billion results. Surprisingly, when I did it yesterday, it's like two over two billions. I don't know what's happened, uh, but still, the number and leadership is quite some something very well discussed in the, in the internet. So, if you need more, just Google it. Stop. Uh, I think after like 1 billion of the pages because otherwise they are repeating. So when we look on at organizations, we sometimes look at them as a very hierarchical pyramid that you get promoted, it's predictable. And all of you probably seen the org chart. There's some people below, some people on the top. It's quite frequent. It's like almost everywhere. However, when you look at organization, you can look at them from different lenses. And these different lenses are net. So you will see that some people are part of the, some groups. They are connecting, interacting to each other. There could be network of work communication, but network of strategic decision, network of gossips in the organization, network of, I don't know, G Game of Thrones fans. There's a lot of uh, other relationship in the organization rather than just hierarchy. And trust me, if you want to look at the power of the organization, OrgChart is one just like a part of the story. And I think one of the most important group of the networks is smokers. Uh, I, I face in my, my life like a situation that at, I, I met the representative of the product that we were building. Uh, he was smoking in front of the building and asking what are you doing uh, to me. I was like, hey, I'm working on this product. Well, I'm selling that product, no way. You are this mysterious guy called team. Yes, I am. Why do you don't want to meet the team? I don't need to. Hmm. Maybe you should all go for smoking with him because otherwise there's no chance to meet some people at the organizations. So it's part of the your reflection. So we can think about some structures or that we part of. And of course, some of you are part of the team. Some of you are part of community of practice. Some part of your part of larger networks, like, for example, Azure community in Poland or Azure community in, in the worldwide, depends where you are. So it could be formal, it could be non-formal. So I was like inviting you for one minute, catch a friend of you sitting next to you and think about what part of the network you are. Just one minute for you. I'm giving it back on my credit. <laughs>
one part of what I love in that community is that when someone raises a hand, we are stop talking and well, most of us at least. <laughs> And this is something which is not very common in other parts of the communities. I hope you extended your networks, even talking to others. Uh, it's really deliberate practice that I was thinking to put you in that exercise. So I will come back while you are doing this. All right. So I was thinking actually to bring you some more details about leadership. And after some reflection of mine, saying, OK, maybe theories of leadership are very interesting, mostly for scholars, academics, and some PhD students. So I was saying, OK, give the, just the summary. Don't sp spend too much describing the, the texts that are mostly published in the journals without pictures. And they are just commenting each other or like from the century. And surprisingly, uh, every thought leader has his own definition of leadership, and there's plenty of them. But I would like to highlight one important thing, which is actually changing, and this is really cool, that the researchers acknowledge something which is, was something, I think, to our community quite obvious, that leadership can be a process and it could be inclusive process to others. So apart from one leader-centric person, there's also people that have reciprocal leadership influence and they don't have to be formal. So this idea about sharing leadership among those guys at the top is actually part of the network. It's like uh, reciprocal. It could be uh, could be shared. It could be something that's really you know less centric. Okay, so part of the story is like a lot of the theoretical discussion. One of the concepts is that uh, idea of the leadership is boundary spanners is a fantastic concept. I think it's quite intuitive. So my story is about Mr. M. Imagine the the guy who is not a manager. He's not a formal leader. He's the, the person that can solve something in a large organization, something in our days. And to set the scene, in that organization, resolve access to JIRA takes around one week. Imagine the situation that you need to synchronize with three other teams in the large organization. You can use your imagination that is like probably something will take a little bit longer than one month. And it's not so obvious because it will take, in terms of the formal way, the people need to figure out who can ask whom, and they start like a long email chain. So if you have the, such a person in the organization, he can connect to whom you should connect, and that person can establish relations. So when you think about some ideas how this leadership can be shared, it's a person who really you know, can connect uh, some networks. So, well, uh, I'm also a researcher, so I'd like to sometimes come back to the theory. And I think in our community, we like this guy on the left. It's, does anyone? Oh, I already <laughs> highlighted who is that person. Uh, I, I think we, we come back to Frederick Taylor because his idea was quite successful one century ago. But we sometimes forget that in the battle of the ideas, there are also great ideas that were not so present. <laughs> and that idea is from Mary Parkett Follett. Uh, she was living the same time. It was, she was working with the communities. She was a leader. Also, organization theorist, but like a less prominent than Taylor. And she said something interesting thing that leadership is not defined by the exercise of the power, but but capacity to increase the sense of power among the peoples that you lead. See what is like a change of the perspective. It's like I'm the boss, I'm the most powerful guy, I will tell you what to do, to the situation that you are a leader that you want to increase the power of that group. Uh, and you want to create more leaders among yourself. Catchy idea, but it was also like one century ago, nothing new. And she also did a lot of nice research about like how you can imp uh, you need to well, look on your self-control and you need to interact with the environment. So she was thinking about how to create such an emergent leadership as well. So uh, Susie mentioned about interesting uh, concept about evolution of the leadership so from expert achiever to catalyst and this interesting summary of the studies of two gentlemen from the United States called jo Joyner and Josephs and okay I, I look at the re research it's it's like very interesting research like 40 years of the experience four years study collecting ideas so from the methodological point of view it's like oh there's some caveats there Although it's a very interesting idea to really just to reflect. 
Because when you think about when someone is leading others, he's, that person can actually come from evolution. And typical, of course, it's a stereotype, but typical part is that you are very good at something. Then if you want to get promoted, you'll be still very good at something, but you need to lead people. So you still are good. Then you just realize, oh, you need to motivate people. And then you come, oh, I cannot motivate. Well, I still can motivate, but actually I can create the environment for motivating others. So it's like an evolution journey. Uh, it combines many things like increasing self-awareness as a, as a leader as well. Also, they make some percent of the people that they study. Is it like a sample around 600 of the people that they met? Uh, and like the distribution is that, well, after this post heroic, so creating more environments, like it's like a less than majority, of course, like five percent. So, yeah, <laughs> that's the it's a it's a growing leader. <laughs> so, question to you next 30 seconds on my credit think about your leaders in your environments where they are. Are they more in the expert field? So, they believe that power or influence come from the expertise and authority. So in order to lead others, you need to be the best at something. Or they are more achievers, so they really motivate you to achieve something, take in a bigger picture. Or they are more in the create environment that this vision is like joining people together. 30 seconds, catch your neighbor, maybe other one than the first one, try to connect with someone else. 30 seconds, discuss, how's your leaders? I love hand tsunami. Right, so my quick story about Mr. T. Uh, he was brilliant expert. Uh, he actually teach others how to code. He had even some lectures on that. And when he became a leader of the team, he asked me, hey, do you have any so-called algorithm for resolving conflicts? And I was saying, hmm, wait a moment. But at that time, I gave him a book how to do it. So we both were in the path of learning how to become uh, leaders. OK. So we touched a little bit this agile leadership. So I was actually trying to Google this and try to good resources. And probably uh, credits to, to Henrik. He, he also have a nice idea, ability to, call, to synthesize a lot of things. So I saw the drawing from him. This is more beautiful than mine. but. When you look on the leader, there's a person to create some boundaries, but also help you with the direction. But it doesn't mean necessarily that he's a part of every small group or handling some very obnoxious people <laughs> in the organization. And he listed a lot of, of uh, activities. By the way, it's like a couple of them. Uh, studies at Ohio University in the 80s, they listed 150 behaviors and they created a long survey on that. So it's just like a part of it. So what I meant by this slide is that leadership is quite hard work and there's a lot of things to do. So another idea from our community, uh, I don't know if you might know Mike Sahota, this actually have nice drawing which I borrow. Uh, so when you look on organization behavior, uh, actually, of course, to simply simplify the whole situation, this behavior follows the leadership behavior. It's a well-known fact called modeling in psychology. So when you see that someone who thinks his authority behaves like that, it's actually make you feel, okay, I can do it best well, similar. So look on your leaders in the organization and think what kind of behavior they are modeling and how, how do you feel with that? So other picture is interesting that your leader is your key, but also can be a limit. So. If you are part of the organization when your leader is supporting, uh, it's quite great. But if you are part of the organization that your leader is your bottleneck, that's the different story. So it comes to the story of Mr. P. He was actually very great engineering and very person who, I think on that evolution scale, he was great achiever. 
So he really want to motivate people, but he know that the best way is to really put a lot of effort, be the best and really making sure that this part of organization is the, the great one. So there was a lot of, a little bit, I would say competition, a lack of transparency, what's happening. And this was just part of the organization, the rest of the part. And the guy who was leader of himself, more he was more transparent, he wanted to collaborate. So that story tells you that your leader also is your bottleneck and you can work with your leader. Right, so I talk a lot about leadership. And at, remember at the beginning, I start with the shared leadership idea. And I think this is something what is by intuition known in our community, but it's like not very often cited or not uh, often discussed. So it's actually this part of the emerging part of the organization, uh, organizational research that actually this leadership can be shared and distributed among members and it's emergent state. So it means that this, well, it's a temporal. So sometimes when you think about your project, people that can interact. So in that case, someone can lead one direction to the other, another. They mutually influence each other. And there are some benefits because, well, when you research something, you, you want to understand why, but you want to find, especially in the management science, okay, so what? So what that people are mutual? Well, the good thing is the benefit is quite kind of intuitive again. So there's team identification, knowledge sharing, is rising engagement, accountability, that brings to, to better result in different measurement of performance. There is like a slightly satisfaction there. There's also increasing terms of creativity, innovation. So it sounds like a perfect silver bullet, isn't so? Although, thankfully, some researchers are also a bit like down to the earth saying, hey, there's also some bad signs that, for example, this sharing leadership also can lead you to power play and some conflicts in the teams because people would like to leash to each other. So don't treat it as a silver bullet. Treat this as a element of uh, leadership that can emerge in the team and leader can support this emergence. Uh, okay. So let's complicate the thing. Uh, remember, I still in the part this, in this talk a bit uh, researcher. So, okay, what does actually this shared leadership happen, and what do you need? And if you are working in academia, you probably heard the name called uncitizen. uncitizen. Uh, I just like still trying to learn how to write it in Polish as well. But it's actually like what's the factors be before the phenomena that is happening? And again, surprise, surprise. There are two important factors. One is team characteristics. So you need to find, you need to have a team that is re really willing to collaborate, willing to communicate, is open and a, a bit proactive. It has also like a necessary competence to do the work. But you also need a formal leader for enabling that, that team. And characteristic of the formal leader, and this is connection to this previous thing, he's actually empowering. So he's a little bit humil, uh, humble, and he also act, is his active coach. So he's helping team to grow, develop. So he is like a more coach in a sense, not in a sense of life coach, but in a sense of team coach that's trying to help team to ex achieve better results. Then you have the third leadership, but it's also related to some characteristics of the task that team is working, culture, internal motivation, cohesion of the team, Imagine how people are spending time in the research, touching a little element of that model. And the results I'll mention that I already gave you, so performance, creativity, satisfaction. There's a general idea how people are trying to make a research on the shared leadership. It's getting boring, so <laughs> I will kill you with the graphs. <laughs> uh, but I think these graphs are quite interesting. Sorry, it's my bias of researcher. Uh, so it's just like a theory. And well, surprisingly, those theoretical researchers are also asking some teams and make actually like real survey and studies. So those three guys uh, called Chutas, Luke and Owens, and okay, a joke for, from the researcher side. If you see somewhere a guy from Chinese name, probably they have access to the bigger sample of the respondents. 
And by the way, this is like a conclusion from the study on 75 teams over 308 people. So they really can make this research in Asia because the people are willing to fulfill the surveys, which I come back at the end. All right, what's happening on, the uh, on these graphs? So you want to actually uh, increase share leadership, there's interesting first graph. If you are seeing that you have high team competence, so team is skilled, if you, can, if you try to enable share leadership by many behaviors, so sharing this leadership influence among the team, there's a chance in that group that this team will be more performing or even better. Although, if the team is, has like a less competence, if you try to enable that team to be like a more shared leadership there, be more responsive over the SAMs, they will perform a little bit lower than if, when you have like a formal leader in the center. Again, it's like, well, you are talking to us with the, some, you know, something that we know by intuition, but they did that research. This is better. So how about humility? So if you have a team that is very proactive, if you are humble as a leader and you give the space to the team and that, that team is proactive, surprise, surprise, results of that team can be better uh, in terms of shared leadership. However, if you have non-proactive team, no matter how, how hard you try with your humility, maybe the result will be not surprising. I know that like the conclusion from that graph is something earth breaking. Again, similar thing with the active coaching. So when you think about idea that you want to share leadership with the team and you actively coach, uh, when you start coaching, the, the performance is like a bit lower than if you don't coach at all. Again, something which is really uh, down, well, something new maybe to, to people. But it's interesting actually because they summarize that it's not like a silver bullet. You need to have combination of the leader, the vertical leader as we call it, and also people in the team to really make a magic which is not so surprised. So conclusion is simple. Formal leaders can en enable shared leadership if they want. <laughs> How to do it? Well, if they engage them in empowerment and demonstrating humility as a leader and be an active coach. So not leave the team alone, but actually work with the team in order to enable them growing. Right, so how to act as a leader, you may think. Uh, okay, you heard about those three things, but when you come back to the others' models, so this part of being a catalyst, empowering is the one way. Uh, coach, consult, be connection, be humble. Other thing is, which is I stole from the some guys working with the things like work at loud as a leader. Show what you are working on, how you're working on that. Be transparent with your work before you start asking about the transparency in the organization. That's like a cheap advice if you want to take away something from that man. And think about as a leader in terms of we instead of I. So you as a leader, you can join network, you can engage in the, into network, you can work at loud, and you can start another network. So be part of the networks. And of course, some researchers are also have some consulting backgrounds. So if you see any fourth dimension or four field uh, advice it's something which is very well known but nicely uh, work quite fresh from wind cluster and wind room so ladies they they were working on the how actually lead the networks and after some studies they create like something really useful for me i was trying to teach this to some leaders so it's a very simple 4c so it's like remember to it's a catchy thing to, to remember so if you want to work with the team think about on the one dimension where you want to focus, if you want to focus on interactions or performance. So if you want to focus on one person or collective, so you can start from the connect person. So if you have someone who is not connected to the team as a leader, what you can do, start to connect that person to the group. How to do it? Well, it's a social skills, hard to practice, but you can just introduce that person to the group. So if you are a leader that you have still in the team that is not per well connected, you can do some team coaching with them, trying to create some, well, well, some purpose together, you know, probably some team charters and other stuff that all the Scrum Masters are doing, by the way. Right, so if we go to the side of the performance, 
if you have one person that is not very performing, again, you are not enabling that person. You consult that person, you mentor that person, give them knowledge, ability, what that person needs to perform. And if you have a group that they would like to perform, create the environment for them to perform. So catalyze. Interesting uh, tool for working with the people. It's quite new. Okay, so we have a lot of things. And I was thinking about instead of ending and allowing some time also for questions, is like there's a catchy phrase like we have a lot of system thinking in our community. I think even every day we have a training on how to think in systems, how to utilize system thinking. So my advice is yes, and think like system, but act as a network. So connect to the people, connect, engage, initiate. And I'm also stealing the catchy phrase for Jar Harold Jarkey. He's a Canadian researcher on collaboration in the teams. He said, well, leadership is actually helping to make the network smarter. And if you think about this, how to change perspective on leadership, uh, and remember this graph with the networks in the organization, your leader is actually thinking how to make those networks more smart with your engagement. And by the way, I'm revealing the secret of this connection that we have twice in that workshop, or well, that lecture, you acting and interacting with others. So it's like initiation, your interaction with the networks when you speak to other people. So imagine what's the power of this network and how to make this network more smarter. I'm trying to give you some this idea. Rest is your, in, your, in your hands. Right, if you want to read more, uh, you want to read this model, this is this book of the guys. First part is cool, second part is a bit uh, cheesy. Uh, so there's also some summaries uh, there. Uh, you can read more. I, can, I will publish this slide to the public network so you don't need to copy everything. But before I leave you, and that's why I reserve a couple more minutes. Uh, remember, I'm part of the researcher. So if you'd like to take part in the research in leadership in self-organizing team developing software, and you have access to some teams, I highly in invite you to take part in the survey. It's, uh, it's a survey on our University of Science and Technology in Krakow. Uh, remember the guys with, well, the, the the slide with the graphs, they studied 75 teams and 30 people, 300 people. Hey, I don't have access to people in China, so that's why I'm trying every way to how to influence that. So if you can help me uh, with the survey, that will be very, I will be very grateful. Thank you. That's all what I have for today. So thanks. <laughs>